So due to shipping restrictions, we can't really supply deck skins in lengths much larger than 2.1 to 2.2 meters. Now that does mean if you're working on a longboard or a mini mail, you are gonna have to join some deck skins together end for end. But as you can see on this board behind me, that doesn't need to look bad at all. Now for the sake of this video, we're just gonna be making a longer deck skin using these shorter boards so it's easier to film, but the process is the same regardless of which length you are working with. Okay, so to create your deck skins, you're going to want to lay out your boards on your workbench and play around with the arrangement until it comes up with the look that you like. Now for us, we like to cut a 10 degree angle into the end of our boards because this makes it go from looking like an essential joint to a design decision. Now for this, we just use a drop saw, but you can do it in any method that you have available. Just try and keep it nice and straight and consistent. So just by having that 10 degree angle cut into the ends of the boards, we can arrange it in many different orientations and come up with several different looks. Now, if you have the capability of doing so, you can fine tune all your joints using something like a hand plane or a jointer, but as long as they're fairly close, it should be fine because this all does get reinforced with fiberglass cloth after the fact. Now, once you've come up with an arrangement that you like, it's time to stitch all of the boards together. Now, stitching is just using masking tape or something similar to stretch across the joints and hold the boards in place while you move on to doing the glue up. Now, depending on your deck skin arrangement, you may need to stitch it together in sections so that you can still apply glue to those seams. On really intricate designs, it can be a good idea to stitch the whole thing together as a single sheet, then cut it out using a razor blade to separate it into sections. It's a good way of keeping things together and it means it's less likely to lead to confusion. So once everything has been stitched together, you can apply your polyurethane glue to the seams. So we like to just flip it over so that you can form an A shape, apply glue down the middle of the trench, flip it back flat, and then put tape across those joints to hold it together. Now, as we're going to be flipping this over several times throughout this glue up, I also like to apply a full length piece of tape across the seam to catch any glue squeeze out and that is also going to help prevent it from getting glued to your workbench. Now repeat this process for the rest of your sections until you are left with one full length deck skin. Now the final step of this deck skin is the fiberglass reinforcing tape on the underside of that joint, but it does need to happen once the glue is dried. So you could use this time to move on to assembling your frame if you've got the space to do so, but as this video is focusing on the deck skins, we're just going to move forward. Now, end grain to end grain joints are never going to be that strong, especially when compared to long grain joints, which often outmatch the strength of the wood fibers themselves. Now, because of that, we do want to reinforce this joint on the underside or the inside of the board with some fiberglass cloth, which is going to go a long way to helping with compressive strength. And once the whole thing is glassed, it's going to be just as strong as a solid piece of wood. Once the glue is dried, you're going to have to remove your tape from around those joints and use a sander to remove any glue squeeze out and flatten out any high spots. Now to apply your fiberglass, you're going to need a small amount of epoxy resin. Now the resin used is up to you. We like to recommend either the West Systems or the Kinetics range of resins as that's what we know and trust. But do your research and find something that's local to you and is good for laminating on timber. So once your seams are being sanded and nice and smooth, you're going to lay out your fiberglass cloth across the seam, trying to center it up and then mix up your resin. Once your resin is mixed, just pour it over the fiberglass cloth and use something that is firm but flexible. So think of a credit card or something similar to spread out the resin, pushing quite firmly into the cloth. You want to use firm pressure so that you drive the resin through the cloth and onto the timber without leaving too much on top of that cloth. Now, if you have any pools of epoxy, just make sure that you squeegee that off and use a rag to remove it. You're not trying to make a puddle of epoxy here, more laminating and saturating that cloth until it's got perfect contact over the entire joint. Okay, and that is all there is to doing your deck skins. Now, you're gonna to have to set this aside to dry for at least a day. That's why we suggest doing it first. But by using this method, we've come up with a full length deck skin, which is plenty strong thanks to this fiberglass cloth. 